Since its introduction in 2004, the service dominant logic has fundamentally changed the way of thinking among many general marketing and management scholars. We are convinced that this new perspective should be applied to sport marketing as well because it's superior to many traditional concepts. We even believe that this perspective is not only useful in sport marketing, but it also provides a better understanding of sport markets in general. Using the service dominant logic, we are better able to explain how sport markets function and how value for people is created. Central to the service dominant logic is the concept of value co-creation. Or in other words, the idea that value can only be created through the interaction and collaboration of various actors, including the customer. This is inherent to sport markets, as value is created by people as they use sports to interact with each other. If you have ever attended a sporting event at a stadium, irrespective of the kind of sports we're talking about. You have probably felt the atmosphere and remembered the positive and also negative experience, full of emotions for a long time. However, these aspects are often neglected, both in sport economic models as well as in traditional models in sport management and marketing. For example, sport economics regularly consider sports events as team products. But is there really anything produced? Looking at a sport event from the perspective of the service dominant logic, it rather represents a platform which enables individuals to get together and jointly spend their leisure time or engage in business relationships. From our point of view, this perspective is much more appropriate than the notion of a sport event as a product which is produced by a team and consumed by consumers. Okay, the topic is very important for sport managers since they must understand their role as managers in the sport market. Above, they must also understand why fans, sponsors, athletes, politicians or business enterprises participate in sport events and which values they derive from it. Well, let's take the example of a football game. Value creation here is certainly not confined to the club itself. Instead, fans contribute a crucial part of the atmosphere in the stadium. Value co-creation even takes place outside the stadium, as fans and sponsors use, for example, away games or the time before and after the game to interact with each other. This idea to consider the sport event as a platform for leisure and business activities extends the horizon of sport management. And furthermore, this has important implications for the role of managers, as they must realize that they have only a limited influence um, on some of the factors that contribute to the creation of values for their customers. Hence, their role shifts from a manager of the service delivery process to a relationship manager in a network of actors co-creating value on a platform. Let's take another example. In management of sport brands, we arrive at a very similar conclusion. Managers cannot create or build up sport brands because the image of sport brands is considerably influenced by contributions of other stakeholders, in particular the fans or customers themselves. The innovation lies in the complete paradigm which enables scholars to develop theories and models which better explain the complex phenomena in sport markets. Sport managers benefit from better analysis of sport management problems as the service dominant logic enables us to understand the true nature of sport markets. As a result, sport managers can develop more appropriate strategies for their businesses. Yes, considering the fact that the service dominant logic and value co-creation had, up to that point, only rarely been applied to sport management, we had 
actually a surprisingly large number of submissions from various areas of sport management. Moreover, the submissions covered both conceptual and empirical papers using a broad variety of methods, including qualitative and quantitative approaches. Well, we think the special issue provides a basic framework for future research. Scholars now may use the fundamental premises of the sport value framework in order to reflect and to rethink approaches they currently use. One of the challenges for future research will be to analyze how value on sport markets is co-created by different actors and which actor contributes to what extent to value co-creation. Moreover, researchers and practitioners have to be aware of the different notions and expectations of value in order to better accommodate for them. Because finally, both economics and management should aim at creating value for individuals and for society in general. The first article of this special issue is titled The Sport Value Framework – A New Fundamental Logic for Analysis in Sport Management. In this article, Chris Horbel, Bastian Popp and me, Herbert Voracek, provide a basis for the adoption of the perspective of service-dominant logic and the application of the concept of value co-creation to the field of sport management. We propose the Sport Value Framework, which is based on the fundamental ideas of service-dominant logic, but takes the characteristics of sport markets into account. The Sport Value Framework consists of 10 foundational premises which provide guidance for an improved understanding of sport management phenomena and better management decisions. In the second article, titled Exploring Customer-to-Customer -customer Value Co-Creation Platforms and Practices in Team Sports, Sebastian Ulrich provides a typology of customer-to-customer -customer value co-creation platforms. This typology consists of two dimensions, the value co-creation sphere and the type of value co-creation platform. In addition, URI identifies five customer-to-customer -customer value co-creation practices that occur across different platforms. These practices describe what team sport customers do when they co-create value with other customers. The third article of the special issue is titled Creating Value Through Membership and Participation in Sport Fan Consumption Communities. In this article, David Hetland investigates the influence of sport fans' attitudes and behavior on sport event attendance, merchandising sales, and word of mouth advertising. In doing so, he considers that customer to customer interaction has a significant influence on consumer behavior. His analysis enhances the understanding of the effects of fan groups on desirable outcomes for sport teams and sport event organizations. The fourth article of the special issue is titled Co Destruction of Value by Spectators the case of silent protests. By examining a specific incident during a sport event, Maximilian Stieler, Friederike Weismann and Klaas Christian Gammelmann address both the bright and the dark side of value co-creation. They present their observation of a silent protest of football fans against tighter security guidelines issued by the Deutsche Fußballliga. Fans throughout Germany agreed to remain silent for the first 12 minutes and 12 seconds on three match days and this created a very unusual atmosphere in the stadia. The article illustrates that although spectators usually contribute to a positive atmosphere in the stadium, they can also destroy the atmosphere with events such as silent protests. For this reason, the authors draw a distinction between value co-creation and value co-destruction. The fifth article in the special issue is titled Considering Competition Strategies in Sport Tourism Networks. Nicolas Lonnier and Xie Yen Su investigate competition strategies in sport tourism by using the example of non-profit nautical sport clubs on the northern coast of France. Lonnier and Su's research contributes to a better understanding of how private sector firms, non-profit organizations and governments can collaborate to provide these value propositions, e.g. how they co-create value in networks.